noticed everybody had coats on today. I got out my favorite fuzzy thing to wear because it's a little bit chilly out. But can the birds put a, can the birds put a coat on? No. What, what do they have to keep warm? They snuggle up. They snuggle up, they do. Put their mommy. Yep, yep, they put their nose under their wing, don't they? And what do they have on that keeps them warm? You know what they wear? What Birds have feathers, don't they? Yes. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes underneath their big soft feathers that we see, they have little tiny fluffy ones that are kind of extra warm. Like a coat. Like my coat. You're right. But it's still not warm enough for when it's really cold. Remember, we get snow and ice and cold. The birds would be too chilly. So guess what they do? They migrate. And that means they fly somewhere where it's warmer. Yeah. They fly where it's a lot warmer during the winter. Like a nest. Yes, <laughs> warm like a cuddly nest. Yeah, that's right. So here's the first book about migration, and this is a Canada goose. And he's flying all by himself in this picture, but really, Canada geese don't go all by themselves. They go together. And look at this migration picture. What is that? It's whales. Did you know that whales migrate too? Whales go in the ocean, of course, but they even go to warmer water. What does water do when it gets too cold? It yeah, it floats, that's true. Remember on the pond or on the river? What, what forms on top of that cold, cold water? Um, what? Ducks. Ducks. <laughs> ducks float on that cold water. And boats float on the water. But in the winter, do you ever go ice skating? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's ice on the water in the winter. What would they do in the winter? That wouldn't work very well, would it, for a whale to be covered up in ice? Can I tell you something? What would you like My to mom tell us? Said when it's very cold and snowy and the water freezes when the day is like in snow the the water turns in ice, and then we can fly. That's exactly right. Your mom's right. Remember, when water Okay. So many animals migrate to warmer places in the fall. They're getting ready. They go before it gets too cold for them. Reindeer migrate. Did you know that? What's they go that? to that's a reindeer. They migrate they migrate to find food because what if the snow covered up the grass they want to eat? The reindeer move because they want to find food. Some birds migrate. They migrate to find new, warmer homes. Some whales migrate. They migrate to have babies in warmer that water. Is Isn't it beautiful? And they want to have their babies in warmer water. They don't want to have a baby in cold. Baby, 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 Yeah. Some fish migrate. Look at these fish jumping up the water. There. And this is, they migrate to lay their eggs. See those beautiful salmon eggs? Those are, those are salmon and they swim a very hard swim. They push and push and push to get up the river to lay their eggs in just the right place. Because they want their babies to start out in just the right place. That's nice. Some insects migrate. Remember we talked about the monarch butterflies? You remember we saw some little caterpillars and then we saw their chrysalis? Oh, my dad, will fall down the leaves and it'll stick up and it'll Yeah. Some seals migrate. They migrate thousands of miles. You know, I actually never thought about a seal migrating, but they do. And they all say, see you next spring. 
So I have a funny book about, well, let's read this one first. This is called Inch by Inch, and it is by Leo Leone. And let's see. One day, a hungry robin saw an inchworm green as an emerald sitting on a twig. He was about to gobble him up. What did that mean? This is a robin, and there's the inchworm. And the robin wants to eat him. Do you think he's going to eat him up? Let's see what happens. Do you want to sit down and see the pictures? Yeah, you can do that. Don't eat me. I'm an inchworm. I'm useful. I measure things. Is that so, said the robin. Then measure my tail. Do you think the little inchworm will be afraid to get on the robin's tail? The robin wants to eat him up. Let's see if he's brave enough. That's easy, said the inchworm. One, two, three, four, five inches. There he is. He's, he was brave enough. He got on that robin's tail and he measured it. And it's five inches. Now what's going to happen? Just think, said the robin, my tail is five inches long. And with the inchworm, he flew where other birds needed to be measured. Look, he gave the inchworm a ride on his back. That's kind of fun. That's what it looks like a lot of fun. Oh boy, look at this big long neck to measure. <laughs> the inchworm measured the neck of the flamingo. He measured the toucan's bill. Whoa, lots of things. He measured the legs of a heron. Whoa, and nobody ate him. He's a lucky guy. He measured the tail of a pheasant. And the whole hummingbird. <laughs> I bet he's almost as heavy as the hummingbird. I bet a hummingbird couldn't fly if you put an inchworm on him. They're so tiny. One morning, the nightingale met the inchworm. Measure my song, said the nightingale. Could an inchworm measure a song? Mm -mm. But how can I do that, said the inchworm. I measure things, not songs. Measure my song or I will eat you for breakfast, said the nightingale. And then the inchworm had an idea. I'll try, he said. Go ahead and sing. So he's going to try to measure that song. Oh, my goodness. If he doesn't measure it, he's going to get eaten up. So there's that nightingale singing. The nightingale sang, and the inchworm measured away. See, here he is. He says he's measuring that song. Let's see what he does. He measured and he measured, and he measured, and look, here he is. He's going a little further away from that nightingale, isn't he? And he kind of looks like the grass. He's kind of hard to find. And inch by inch, where is that little guy? Here, he made it all the way over here. Inch by inch. Um, until he inched out of sight. Now the nightingale can't find him. And that's the end. He snuck away. He tricked that nightingale, didn't he? He tricked him. So our next book tells us more science about why do geese fly south in the winter? Remember, why did they fly south? It's going to be too cold. Or maybe he can't find food. What are these animals doing marching over the bare ground? Caribou moved to the evergreen forest. What are they? Those are caribou. And remember monarch butterflies? We talked about them flying to Mexico. Canada geese soar high over your home, honking all the way. What are they doing? They're migrating. Why do, look at all those geese flying. Why do geese fly south? Well, they're going to go to a new habitat. That means a new place to live. Some animals move when the weather gets bad. That's what's happening to us. It's getting colder, isn't it? Some animals, or they go to places where it's warmer. Many birds like geese move to the warm south in the, in the winter. In the spring, they come back. This says, some insects migrate downward. Termites and earthworms migrate deep into the ground to escape. 
And oh my goodness, some animals migrate to find food and water. If these wildebeest didn't move, they might starve or die. That is a whole bunch of wildebeests. And they're looking for some, a new place to find their food. And look at the penguins. <laughs> Other animals migrate to have babies. Remember we talked about the seals and the whales wanted to find warmer water for their babies. Why doesn't my dog migrate? Does the dog need a warmer place? Well, look at this little boy who's given him food. Does he have to go somewhere else for food? Nope, he has food right there. And his, his master probably finds him a warm place to stay. This is a little tiny mouse. It's a hibernating dormouse. And they curl up and find a warm, warm place. And they wait for winter to be over. They sleep all winter. And that's called hibernating. Isn't he cute? See his little feet? <laughs> He's kind of cute. How do animals know when to leave? A butterfly. Yeah, butterfly. How does that beautiful red bird and that beautiful monarch know it's time to leave? And they fly. They start to fly, yep. Some animals get very hungry. Their food is going away. They eat and eat and eat and they get really fat before they migrate so that they have lots of, lots of food left in them to keep them so they don't get hungry while they're migrating. Seasons change and they know by instinct that it's time to go. Do they have a map? Here's some salmon. These are fish that are going. Do they have a map? They have instinct. Something inside them tells them, here's where we go. How long does migration take? It can take animals a long time to get where they're going. The Arctic tern is a special bird. This one right here. What He's, is that? Hold on, let me tell you about this one first. He's gonna take six months to fly from the top of the world all the way to the bottom. He flies from the North Pole to the South Pole and then guess what he does? He turns around and flies back again. So this bird flies all the way around the world every year. Oh my goodness. These, you wanted to know what that is? Those are red crabs and they live on Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean and hundreds of them migrate to the ocean and then back to land. It just takes them a few days. It doesn't take them very long. So let's see. Do people do something with migration? They do. We don't migrate, do we? But we affect the migration of other creatures when we build things. Sometimes we build stuff that gets in the way. So people have to watch out what they do for animals, that it doesn't make it so they can't migrate. And okay, so here's a funny storybook about a robin who tried to migrate. It's called Round Robin, Round Robin by Jack Kent. So let's see what it says. At first, little robin was, the, was like any other baby bird. Most of him was head and the rest of him was hungry. Baby birds are so tiny and they have great big mouths. And here's his mommy or his daddy bringing him some food to eat. He ate and he ate and he ate and he ate and now look at him. See how teeny he is up here? Look what he looks like down here. He grew, didn't he? Until he looked more like a ball than a bird. Everybody called him Round Robin. The other birds fluttered about from tree to tree. Come fly with us, Round Robin, they said. But Round Robin was just too fat to fly. When he wanted to go anywhere, he had to hop. Hippity hop, hippity hop, with sometimes more bumps than hops. But mostly he just stayed where he was. All he wanted to do was eat. Eat, eat, eat. Eat, eat, eat. When fall came, the robins began to fly south. Come along, Round Robin, they said. Soon snow will cover the ground and food will be hard to find. Well, he wouldn't want that, would he? Because he likes to eat. So Robin reached, ooh, so Robin headed south to hippity hop, hippity hop, bump. It was slow going. All that hopping made him hungry. So every few minutes he stopped to eat and this slowed him down even more. He was having a hard time getting there and all of his friends were flying. 
Uh oh. <gasps> He didn't get away and the snow came. Now how's he gonna find some food? Round Robin had not gone very far when winter caught up with him. Hopping in the snow was very hard work. It was easier on the road where the automobiles had packed the snow hard as ice. Hippity hop, hippity hop. But then what happened? He went on the road because it was easier, but who else was on the road? Cars were. That's dangerous. If you don't want to get run over, warned a field mouse, stick to the byways. So Round Robin did. But look how hard it is to go through snow up to your neck. Oh my goodness. The snow kept getting deeper and deeper, but Round Robin struggled on. Oh, this, one, this one bird is going to fall down on the yeah, snow. Right. I'm starving, he complained one day, but there's nothing to eat. I wouldn't say that, said the fox. Uh-oh, what's the fox going to do with the robin? Eat him. He might eat him. He suddenly appeared, and he said, you look very tasty to me. Look at the fox with his tongue. Mm, he wants to eat that robin, doesn't he? He licked his lips and leaped at the round robin. Uh-oh. What do you think? Let's see what's going to happen. Everything happened so fast that Round Robin didn't have time to think. He was even more surprised than the fox when he found himself flying. He wasn't round anymore. It's from all that exercise of hippity hopping on my way south, he said. He flew and he flew and he flew. Look, now he's in a warmer place. He doesn't have snow anymore. And he didn't dare stop until he caught up with the rest of the robins. It was warm and sunny in the south with snow on the ground. Food was, with no snow on the ground, food was easy to find. And round robin was oh so hungry. So he ate and he ate and he ate. He started out like this and he's eating more things. And what did he turn into again? Another chubby robin. Do you think he can fly? It had taken round robin all winter to make the trip, and now it was spring, and the robins were beginning to fly north again. Come along, round robin, they said. Time to go home. Uh-oh, do you think he can fly? So round robin sighed a deep sigh and started the trip back north. Hippity hop, hippity hop, bump. So he has a long way to go without being able to fly, doesn't he? This little book is called In My Nest. In my nest. Yep, in my nest there are curly twigs. See the twigs here? You can touch it. You want to touch it? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Look at this. There's the little birdie. Tweet, tweet. There's soft, warm feathers. You want to touch him again? Yeah. You want to touch him? Take your turns. How did he do that? <laughs> Can I do it? Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you see how that works? There's a little hole in the back. Yeah, you can make your bird fly, can't you? Not really fly, but wiggle. Yeah. Here you go. Did you want to try it? Okay, can you, you can let go and let him try. There you go. <laughs> Do you want to try it? You want to put your finger in the little birdie? Okay, that's it. Look. <laughs> yeah, let's see what else he had. What did he say he had? He had curly twigs and soft, warm feathers and smooth green leaves with mud to help stick it all together. And there is me. Okay, let her have a turn. There you go. There I am in my nest, it says. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's take turns. Okay. There you go. Nice. And whoop, back up, buddy. Back up. You want to try it one more time? There you go. Okay, so this, this bird got north and he's happy in his little nest, isn't he? He likes that. Okay, now let's look at these birds. Look at all these birds. What's that one? A cat. 
chicken. You know what that is? A chicken. Yeah. A rooster. What does a rooster say? Don't grab. And this one's, uh, does anybody know what that is? That's a crow. He says, caw, caw, caw. And this, whoop, 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 whoop. This one is a, this is uh, Mrs. Rooster. She's a hen or a chicken. A chicken. Yeah, and she says, bark, 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 bark. And this one, what's that? It's a parrot. a parrot. Yep. I don't know what parrots say. Sometimes they try to say things that their people say around them. And what's that? Duck. You know, a duck. That's right. What does a duck say? Quack, quack. Quack, quack, quack. quack. And who is this? I a turkey. It's a turkey. It is. And what do turkeys say? <laughs> What's the turkey say? Gobble, gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble, gobble. gobble. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I have a little, a little something to, a little poem for you. It says, gobble, gobble, gobble. Hear me fuss and squabble. Oh, 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 oh. Here, it's a guessing game. All right. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Hear me fuss and squabble. What am I? Who says gobble, gobble, gobble? A rooster. A rooster. A turkey. There's the turkey. Quack, quack, quack. I make a three-toed track. What bird am I? I'm a ducky. A ducky, yes. Cock-a-doodle-doo. Each morning I greet you. Who says cock-a-doodle-doo? A rooster. A rooster. That's right. Quack, 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 I say as my chicks run and play. What bird am I? Quack, quack, quack. Bark, 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 bark. Who says a chicken, right? And at my age, in my cage, I can say hello. I walk to and fro. What bird am I? Who did we say said what their owners say? What bird says hello? It's a parrot, right? And the last one says caw caw. My voice is rough and raw. What bird am I? A crow. Good for you. Yeah, that's right. Okay, now look at this one is a Canada goose book and it says honk honk goose. Do we have time? Yep, we have time for this one. So are you ready for this? And he has his little chicks with him, doesn't he? Honk honk goose. So let's see what this says. Honky, honky, honk. In chilly mid-March, a male goose called and chased. He chased the squirrels. Honk, 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 honk. Did you know that geese can chase squirrels away? They can. They're kind of, they're bigger. And they have those beaks, and they can chase things. And snap, snap, snap at them. So they chased him away. He chased away everybody except one female, one girl goose. And he spent, they spent all their time together. Dabble dip, they paddled in the pond. Pluck pull, they fed on the path. Stretch curve, their necks danced and they mated. Splash splash, they took their bath. Inside the female goose, eggs began to form and it was time to make a nest. He honked, the male chased away a muskrat. Honk, he snapped at a snapping turtle. And honk honk, he rushed at the possum. What happened with her with him? Yep. He chased females to roll. He chased them all away because he has that sharp beak and he can say, snap, 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 go away. And he did. They're inside the mommy still, but let's see. The female goose stacked sticks and grasses. She plucked soft feathers from her breast and used them to line the nest. And then she started laying <laughs> eggs. One egg each day. One egg first. On the fifth day, when the geese were feeding, a raccoon rolled an egg out of the nest and broke it. <gasps> she lost one of her eggs. Oh, that's too bad. 
But look what the daddy did. Honk, 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 and he chased that raccoon away. He wasn't going to let that happen again, was he? The next day, the female laid another egg, and the next day, she laid the last one. All the eggs were laid, so she sat on them to warm them, and now and then, she stood up and turned the eggs over. Did you know that Mother Goose turns her eggs over so they get warm all the way around? She's a good mother, isn't she? What happened if we're... Well, so let's why, see. What happened with... She's turning her eggs over, making sure they're all cuddled in and warm. All the, oh, let's see. Honk, 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 he honked at a kingfisher. Honk, honk, he kept a skunk away. Honk, honk, he chased off a heron. He doesn't want anyone to get close to those eggs, does he? Early each morning and evening, the female goose took breaks to bathe and eat. Under the goose down blanket, the eggs stayed warm. See, she put some of her feathers what in. What happened with the goose by gum? Yep. The mommy and daddy goose put some of their soft, soft feathers all around so they'd stay warm. They're biking it. Yep, that's their babies. And for 28 days, Mother Goose sat on the eggs, and then she heard a sound. Crack, creak, peep. The chicks were hatching. The first one, then two, then suddenly three. Six wet chicks dried in the sun. See all those cute little chicks? They're kind of wet when they come out of the egg and the sunshine dries off their soft, beautiful feathers. The male goose stood guard, honk, honk, he honked at the squirrels, he honked at the ducks, he honk, he honk, he even honked on the neighboring geese. He didn't let anybody come close to his babies. The day after the chicks hatched, the father and mother took a stroll. Twelve wobbly little goose legs followed. You want to count them with me? One goose, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six little babies followed their mommy and daddy. The parents slid into the water, and do you think the chicks will be afraid to get in water? Brand new chicks just born yesterday, just hatched yesterday. And look, they hopped right in the water, didn't they? They're brave. Dabble dip, they paddled. Pluck pull, they fed on the plants. There they are in the water. The mother goose walked up the muddy bank and settled down to rest. Scratch, slip, slip, the tired chicks climbed up, peep, 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 and they scrambled to hide under her wings. See that nice mother goose up there with all those babies tucked underneath? She's a good mother, isn't she? The father goose, who stood guard, stayed alert, ready to chase away any danger. Yes, your mommy's a good mother. Honk, 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 hiss. Those, those geese can sound so angry when they want to protect their babies. And that's the end. Now the geese are getting bigger and bigger. Little baby geese are called goslings. So that's what we have. Okay, whoop, you need to sit down back up here. Thank you. Now we have a book about beaks. Let's take one more minute to read about the beaks. The Beak Book by Pamela Chenko. This beak is red, this beak is brown. Look how sharp they are. Those are, do you know what they use their beaks for? They have to break open the nuts that they like to eat. So they have really hard, sharp beaks. This beak is up. This is a baby bird. He's waiting for his mommy and daddy to put something in. And this beak is down. He's getting his food by reaching down in the water. This beak is open, and this beak is shut. Now see this big open beak? He has a big neck right there, and when he gets something in his beak, boom, it goes in that big neck, and he can fill that up full of fish to eat later. And this guy, look at his, he's called a spoonbill. He looks kind of like, his bill is shaped kind of like a spoon, isn't it? All right. This beak can peck. This is a woodpecker, so he pecks holes in trees. Yeah, I can find bugs. Yep, he can find bugs in trees with that long, sharp one. And this beak can cut. This bird is like an eagle. 
and he eats, he can eat meat. So he's tearing, he has a tearing thing on the end of his beak. He can pull out, um, like if your mommy makes pot roast, he can pull some meat out like you can pull apart a pot roast. This beak is really big and this beak is tiny small. Aren't they pretty? Woo! <laughs> and two beaks together, they look like they're talking, don't they? That's 12 beaks in all.